Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all of my brothers and sisters and welcome to our guests. And I begin by saying Bismillah, Walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. We begin in the name of the one true creator of all that exists and we praise him and him alone and may peace and blessings be upon his most noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een wa alladheena tabi'ihim bi ihsani illa yawm al-deen and upon his family, his companions and those who follow them in righteousness until the day of judgment wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh and I bear witness that nothing has the right to be given worship except the one true creator of all that exists. And I bear witness that he is alone in his oneness and he has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his slave and messenger. And I want to first take some stock of the room. How many born Muslims do we have in the room with us tonight? Born and raised Muslim. Raise your hand. Majority. Hands down. How many people who reverted to Islam or came to Islam from another way of life? Raise your hand. My hand is about there too. All right. How many guests do we have with us that are not yet Muslim? Raise your hands. We have one. Two. Is that just, just one? Okay. No. My question for you is how do you feel being surrounded by all of these terrorists, I mean Muslims? Comfortable and very welcome. That's beautiful. I'm glad that the Muslims are here. I'm glad the Muslims have made you feel such. Because if not, then I would have some complaining to do. But that show would take a quite a different turn right now. Um, you should feel welcome amongst Muslims. We are supposed to be the most hospitable people on the planet. And that is what we are taught as part of our religion. So if you see anything other than that, directly address me before you leave. And I will do my best to take care of you. Okay. It is my pleasure to be with all of you here tonight. And I want to thank you first and foremost. Because the Prophet said, لا الله لا That whoever does not thank people, then he truly does not thank Allah. So I am thankful to you for being here. Because without you being here, then there's no need for me to leave. I'll be talking to empty chairs. And it is also always my pleasure to come back to GMU because some of you may know, and many of you may not, that George Mason University was the first place I ever told my story publicly back in 2007 when I was living in College Park in the Dar es Salaam community working with Sheikh Safi Khan, Ta'ala, one of my dearest imams and friends. And it was here at George Mason that I began what you see now. I had no intention to ever be doing what I'm doing right now. It was the lecture at George Mason that really started it all. So George Mason will always have a special place in my heart and in everything that I do. Now, the lecture tonight, Tesquia, purification. I could have taken this lecture on a number of different routes. It could have went many different places. Because the issue of tasqeet al nafs in Islam, purifying one's own soul, is a deep subject. It is a subject that I, first and foremost, am not qualified to even tamper with. I'm giving you that right now. Because it is a very, very deep subject, and it is the reason for our existence here on earth. The reason that we are here on earth is for that very purpose, to purify that soul that Allah gave us. He gave it to us pure. Our Creator gave us a soul. He gave us a soul that was beautiful. There was nothing wrong with it when Allah gave us. When our Creator gave us the soul and breathed into us life, that soul was pristine, untampered with, pure. And we are the ones who dirty it. We filthy it. We do many things along the path to corrupt it. And our lifelong mission is to do our best to put that soul back in, in order to deliver it back to Allah, our Creator, in, in some type of fashion like we were given it. And it is a struggle that we fail in many times. And we fail in every day. 
but it is a struggle. And this is what I'm going to deal with tonight. I'm not going to deal with the processes and the means and the concepts and let's just be realistic. I want you to leave here with something tonight that will benefit you. I want you to lay on your bed tonight and have something tangible with you tonight that you will walk out of here feeling like something has changed because that is what the real purification of the soul is about is leaving a place better than when you got there this is what really purifying the soul is all about and again we are doing our best attempt to give our soul back to Allah the way he gave it to us and every soul will return back to its original place its place of or origination its place of origination, every soul will return. This is why we say when someone dies, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa na alayhi Verily to Allah, lillah, we belong. We are property of our Creator and we will return as His property. We are always owned. We are never free. This is something that in Islam we are realistic about and that many Muslims have forgotten in this day and age. That there's no such thing as pure freedom in this life. It doesn't exist. Pure freedom will not be found on this earth. Because you can free yourself from everything, but you are constantly owned. You are constantly owned by your creator. You are constantly owned by the constraints of life. You are owned by the concept of time. You are owned by the passage of your own age. You are owned by the air that you breathe, by the water that you drink, the food that you eat. You are never free. You will never be free. The reality of this life is learning how to live in those subservient means and a blissful manner that gives you not only contentment with inside of yourself, but also will give contentment to the atmosphere that is around you and make other people content with you. This is the struggle of a Muslim. And one thing that I have found with a lot of purification of the soul lectures is that unfortunately, a lot of Muslims leave those lectures with the idea that tasqiyatul nafs, purifying the soul, is an event. And that's very, very unfortunate. Because if you think that purifying your soul is an event, then you are only going to fool your own self. It is not an event. Purifying your soul is a lifelong procedure. It never ends. And I'm not even going to start with normally how Tazkiyatun Naf starts with explaining the soul because that would keep us here for a series of lectures and we would never comprehend it anyway because Allah says the ruh, the soul, is one of those things which you have very little knowledge of. You have very little knowledge of. Even one of our greatest scholars who was known as the scholar of the heart and soul, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jazi rahimahullah ta'ala wrote a book called Kitab al-Ruh that's only a few pages. That's all he could come up with few pages. So we will inshallah talk about the event that is a process inshallah tonight. We will have an event that will show you the process. Just to explain to you how serious this process is. There was once a man, his name was Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Rahimahullah ta'ala. How many of you have ever heard this name before? Muslims should have heard this name before. If not, then there is a plethora of homework that you need to do. Ahmad ibn Hanbal was one of the pious predecessors of Islam. He was one of the early generations of Muslims after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was one of the great imams of Islamic jurisprudence. And he was a man of great austerity. He was a man of deep piety. A man who people used to fear his supplications because when he made dua, when he made supplication to Allah, Allah responded to him quickly and proficiently. He actually, his, one of his duas caused the death of one of the Khalifas of Islam. He was very close to his boat. On his deathbed, he was coming in and out of consciousness. He would slip out of consciousness and then back into consciousness. And his son Abdullah was hearing his father say some words as he would slip out of consciousness. And so he leaned closer to his father and he heard his father saying, not yet, not yet. And his son Abdullah became very concerned that my father is losing hope at the end of life. 
He's losing hope at the end of life. He thought his father was saying, not yet, I don't want to die, not yet. So when his father woke up, he said to him, Father, why do you keep saying not yet, not yet? What is these words I am hearing from you? Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, son, shaitan is here with us. Satan is here in this room. Because Satan, Satan is the great enemy of mankind, has been since the beginning. And he will be with all of you on that moment, especially those of you he is concerned about. He said, Shaitan is here in this room with us. And every time I am about to pass out, meaning that he's about to go into death, Shaitan starts to bite his fingers and say, Oh Ahmed, you have slipped out of my grasp. Oh Ahmed, you have slipped out of my grasp. And I am responding to him by saying, not yet, not yet. Meaning that not until my soul has exited my body have you lost me, and not until my soul is gone will I give up on you. Meaning that this struggle between you and I will not end until I am dead. This is Tazkiyatul Nafs. It will not cease until the moment you breathe your last breath. It is a lifestyle. It is not an event. It is a compendium of events that sometimes you will prevail in and sometimes you will miserably fail in. And a lot of times we give up along the road. Most people who get involved in purifying their own soul give up along the road because of the failings. And this is what I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm not going to talk about the success that comes with purifying the soul. Let's talk about the failures. Tonight's will be about the failures because we always talk about the successes. This is what Tesquita Nas brings you some beautiful garden of bliss. Yes, all of that is there. But what about the failures? How do I deal with the failures? How do I deal with the days when my own soul beats me? How do I deal with the days when shaitan overcomes me? How do I deal with the days when I slip and fall and I'm dragging myself through the mud? Help me deal with those days. Because if I can deal with those days, for sure the good days, the days that I'm winning are easy to deal with. It is those days when we're not winning that are the hardest to overcome. But it is the unfortunate reality is that we don't comprehend how beautiful those days really are. We don't, com we don't comprehend how beautiful our failings really are. And that it is all part of the process. It is all part of the reason that we're here. It's part of the human experience to fail to make mistakes, to fall short, to fall off the path maybe once or twice is part of the human experience. If it were not so, it would not be imperative that you recite 17 times every single day It would not be so imperative that if you do not say this statement, your salah does not matter. If it were not such. Let me tell you about a story that is a story more ancient than time almost itself. It is a story almost as ancient as time. And we don't know when it happened, but we have been given glimpses of it in our beautiful book. And it is a story that we pass over so easily sometimes. We teach it to our children, but we fail to comprehend that this is the real quality of our existence. And this is the real beginning of Tazkiyat to nafs is to understand this story because this is the beginning of purifying the soul and it begins at the very beginning and it comes very early in the Quran the story and I'm just going to tell it to you because everybody in here speaks English forget about all the in-depth I'm just real with you tonight when you open the Quran the Surah Al-Baqarah you only get a few verses in till you get to verse 30 and in verse 30, a very beautiful story happens. And it is a story that is all about purifying the soul, and we don't comprehend that. It begins by a conversation that took place. And this conversation is an ancient conversation. It took place before any of us existed. It took place before a thing called humanity existed. And it is a conversation that took place between the Creator and His angels. That He created perfect out of light that never disobeyed him. And the conversation goes, 